Okay, the stage okay. is yours. <laughs> All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Courtney Baker, and I'm pleased to present to you today my confirmation of candidature on the clinical application of text messaging for anxiety and depression. So I'll just firstly have, um, go over an overview of what I'll be talking about today. I'll discuss the first identified problem, which is mental illness prevalence. I'll then introduce a solution to this problem, which are psychological flexibility interventions. I will then introduce a second identified problem, which is the treatment gap, and introduce a solution to this, which is text messaging. I will then outline the three studies I'll be conducting. So firstly, I have a systematic review and or meta-analysis, um, a pilot study, and finally, a randomized control trial. So the first identified problem here is mental illness. And mental illness is a considerable problem in Australia and around the world. It has a significant psychological, physical and social impact on individuals and their families and at a national level um, has a significant financial impact due to the burden of disability and cost of treatment. So this graph here is um, data from the last national survey of mental health and well-being which was conducted in 2007. So this shows how 20% or one in five adult Australians will have a common mental illness in any one year. And more recently, this problem is being exacerbated um, with the current COVID-19 pandemic. So there are more um, mental health problems being reported and uh, more funding is being allocated to, to tackle this. So, Mental illness is currently treated with face-to-face -face therapies and medication. And there are many evidence-based therapies available. And although um, these therapies have a different approach to treating mental illness, they, the effective ones appear to have common processes of psychological change. And these processes of change are um, attention, affect, cognition, uh, self, overt behaviour and motivation. So in my research I'll be targeting these six processes of change using a psychological flexibility framework. So psychological flexibility can be defined as an ability to flexibly navigate through changing demands of life and especially um, when difficult thoughts or feelings or situations arise. So when someone is um, psychologically flexible, they're able to um, be open and non-judgmental to their present experience and continue to behave in ways that add meaning to their life. And psychological flexibility interventions have been shown to have beneficial outcomes um, for academics, physical health, psychological well-being and quality of life. And this is seen in um, clinical and non-clinical populations. So I'll be using three types of um, intervention styles that fall under the umbrella of psychological flexibility. So firstly, I'll be using mindfulness, which is an um, open and non-judgmental awareness of the present moment. So a mindfulness intervention might ask, bring your attention to what you're feeling right now. Next we have values interventions. So these interventions ask a person to identify what is important to them and encourage them to um, choose to act in ways that are in line with these values. And values interventions can also be linked to self-determination theory. And lastly we have self-based interventions. So these might include things like self-compassion, self-concept and growth mindset interventions because these all target the way a person perceives and evaluates themselves. So in a self-based intervention, you might be asked to talk to yourself as you would to a friend who is struggling. So the second problem here is the treatment gap. So mental health funding is up. In Australia, about $10 billion a year is spent on mental health. And this map of Australia here shows um, the spending on mental health per capita 
um, over a year period and this is the increase over a four year period. So even though more money is being spent on this problem, mental health prevalence rates are still on the rise and mental illness is now the most common reason that people in Australia um, see their GP. And from the last national survey of mental health and wellbeing, it was estimated that only 35% of people with a mental illness actually accessed services that they needed. And this is a pattern um, that is seen around the developed world. So even though we have evidence-based treatments and we have money to fund these treatments, they're not um, getting to the people it needs to get to. So here this graph just demonstrates the disparity between the most disadvantaged areas of New South Wales and the differences in service use in those areas. And there are also people for whom the treatments available are not effective for. So this indicates that more money being spent isn't solving this problem. And perhaps what we need is to make the evidence-based therapies that we have more effective um, or to deliver them in a new way. So a solution to this problem is mobile health, or which is a subset of telemedicine. So mobile phone use is now extremely prevalent around the world, with 9 out of 10 people in both developed and developing countries owning a mobile phone. And among these mobile phone owners, um, text messaging is the most popular way of communicating. Text messaging is also extremely efficient, with 91% of text messages being opened in the first three minutes of being received. So incorporating text messaging into healthcare services has meant that um, services are able to access um, a broader range of people at a low cost, regardless of geographical location or socioeconomic status. So text messaging and mental health is a relatively new area of research and in practice as well. But the evidence that does exist shows that text messaging can improve therapy session attendance, can improve medication adherence, can accurately monitor symptoms, enhance treatment outcomes, ensure continuity of care, overcome barriers such as geographical location or simply forgetting to attend appointments, um, increase satisfaction with services, and incorporate treatment into daily life. As, as you know, most people have their phones on them throughout the day. And because this is such a new area of research, there are many limitations in the current studies. So um, many of the trials that have been conducted have small sample sizes and the interventions also use text messaging to frequently deliver reminders rather than to deliver psychological content or prompts. So the present study will assess the effectiveness of a text messaging intervention in a clinical mental health setting. I'll firstly conduct a systematic review and or meta-analysis, followed by a pilot trial, and both of these will inform and lead to um, the main study, which will be a randomised control trial. So study one, the systematic review, aims to provide an updated review of text messaging on the two most common mental illnesses, which are anxiety and depression. It aims to explore mediating and moderating factors of text messaging interventions on anxiety and depression. Use findings from previous data to inform the design of a randomised control trial. And lastly, it aims to understand the effectiveness of a text messaging intervention for anxiety and depression. This slide just outlines the methodology I plan to use for the systematic review. Um, these are the databases that I plan on searching and I'll be using search terms around text messaging and disorder type. The so studies will be included if they are in English, if participants have a diagnosis of depression or anxiety, or elevated scores on a corresponding validated measure. The intervention will use text messaging. Studies will be experimental, and changes in mental health symptoms will be the outcome measure of interest. Studies will be excluded um, if they use medication adherence as the primary outcome measure, articles with no empirical study or where the effect of text messaging cannot be identified will also be excluded here. 
and I'll be registering their review with Prospero. I'll be using Covidence to screen articles following a preliminary search. Myself and another reviewer will screen titles and abstracts as well as full text. Data will then be extracted and risk of bias assessment conducted. And finally, data will be synthesized and analyzed. Next, we have a text messaging pilot study, which aims to determine the acceptability and inform the content of text messages and to collect quantitative and qualitative feedback to inform the design of a randomized control trial. So 10 participants from a clinical sample will be recruited and they will undertake an eight-week trial of a text messaging intervention. And each text will be rated by the participants for acceptability. Following the trial, I'll collect qualitative feedback and ask participants questions such as what did you like, what did you dislike about the text, and what could be improved. So study 2B proposes a randomised control trial to answer the research question, is a psychological flexibility based text messaging intervention effective at improving outcomes of therapy for anxiety and depression? So the randomised control trial has two main aims. Firstly, to determine the effectiveness of text messaging in a real-world clinical setting. And secondly, to explore potential mediators and moderators of the text messaging intervention on mental health outcomes. So participants will be recruited from a private psychology clinic. And participants will be randomised into an intervention or a control group. Both groups will continue to receive therapy as normal but the intervention group will receive a daily text message prompt. Both groups will complete weekly measures and the trial will run ongoing within the clinic for 10 to 11 months with each participant um, undertaking the intervention for eight weeks. So the intervention group will receive one text message per day with a psychological flexibility based prompt. So the idea here is that um, participants will build a habit of receiving a text message at the same time every day and engaging with the content for about a minute or so every day. Both groups will receive one text message a week to prompt them to complete their weekly outcome measures. So the intervention group will receive a total of eight text messages per week. And some example text messages that participants might receive could be mindfulness based such as name the emotion you are feeling right now where do you feel this in your body? Values based, so what kind of person would you like to be today? Or self based, such as remember that you can grow and change, you are not fixed. This slide just shows the outcomes, mediators and moderators of interest for this study. So I hypothesize that a text messaging intervention will be more effective over traditional face-to-face -face therapy at improving mental health outcomes. Um, the text messaging intervention effect will be mediated through value consistent behaviour and mindfulness, both of which will be targeted through the text messaging intervention. And the strength of the effect of the text messaging intervention will be moderated through the frequency of therapy sessions and length of time um, the participant has been in therapy. Um, here is an overview of my PhD timeline. So I'm currently completing my COC and for the rest of the year plan to register both the systematic review with Prospero and um, the RCT with ANZCTR. I plan to apply for ethics and begin my searches for um, my systematic review. And I also aim to complete study 2A, the pilot trial within this year. Right, thank you for your attention. Um, do people on Teams have questions first? Any more questions?